everyone, I'm Abigail, this is James, and welcome to another Two Kids interview. We are joined today by award-winning artist and New York Times best-selling illustrator, Nicholas Smith. Mr. Smith is the author, illustrator, illustrator of the books, The Golden Girls of Rio, My Hair is Poofy and That's Okay. He was the illustrator of, of the number one New York Times best-selling book, The 1619 Project, Born on the Water, and I am Ruby Bridges. His amazing and beautiful artwork has been featured all over the place, including Time Magazine and New York Times. And has also been shared on social media by people such as Michelle Obama and President Biden. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Can you explain what an artivist is? I can. So an, an artivist is someone who uses their art to make a positive change, really just looking at all the things in the world that are kind of broken, not working right, and uses that to make a positive change in the world. When and why did you decide to be an artivist? I have I've been making art my my whole life really and it was just something that I kept doing a lot of times people will stop making art you know after I don't know 10 years old or something they just stop um but I just kept doing it and although I didn't realize that art would be the thing that became my career I went to school for architecture um but in the process of being a, a an architect um designing theme parks I I actually you know, got to the point where I started just making art of things that are going on in the world. And it turned into like really looking at how I can use the art to inspire people to make a positive change. And so um, it became, you know, looking at a lot of issues that are happening, a lot of things that aren't working right and figuring out like how I can um, create a visual that that attracts people and then it gets them to do something like sign a petition or contact their district attorney or something like that. So really, I would say about 10 years ago was when it really started. Um, I've been doing one art piece every Sunday for 10 years. How much of the book The Artivist is about empowering kids and helping them understand that they have a voice right now? Uh, so this book, this book is, it is all about empowering kids and really showing them that their, their creativity um, can move mountains. It can change the world. Um, this little kid, is he's just like so um, at the beginning of the book, you'll see he, he's very he's very frustrated by all the things that aren't working right. <laughs> and he wants to make a positive change and he wants to fix the world and do all those things. Um, and it, it, it shows people how well for him, it's painting. Um, he uses he uses painting to just really kind of um inspire people like scribbling and on walls and making all these different marks that talk about all the things that we can fix um and it goes into um let me see here giant murals uh, of artwork that talk about how we can fix things so it's um it's a it's a lot of uh showing kids that there there are a lot of different ways for one it's not just um painting it's also things like film or singing or dance or poetry or whatever is creative that you do, that thing can be the thing that changes the world. Last month, James and I reviewed the book, The Anti-Racist Kitchen. One word that stuck out to both of us in that book was allyship. In the move for social justice, can you talk to us about the importance of allyship? I absolutely can talk about that. Um, I have as a particular page in the book. Um, this one where um, I talk about the artist needs to be an ally. And so the, the beautiful thing about that is um, it's not con necessarily connected to something that you identify with, particularly um, in the book. There is the LGBTQ community who comes to the artist and they say, we want your help in making a giant mural um, that talks about protecting trans kids. And so that is a moment where he has to listen like that is the thing like you have to you have to listen you have to listen to other people and hear what they're going on what's going on with them what their issues are and that is how you can help in that way and so um allyship is all about like how can i how can i stand up for these people i'm i'm not being affected the way that they are 
I'm not going through the issues that they're going through. But how can I use my influence, my my gifts, you know, um, sometimes my privilege and, and really just make a make make people see that this issue is happening to these people and it's unjust and it shouldn't be happening. And so it's really cool because he, um, at, you'll see on the next page, they, they all get together and make this big mural. And so um, that is one moment where it's like a direct connection of, okay, I'm going to listen to what they're saying and then I'm going to help them, you know, um, in some, in any way that I can, I'm going to stand up for them and show that we're, we're united on this issue. We have interviewed a number of authors who have had books banned in certain places. That means in those places, kids don't have the same access to books that we have and may not be able to see themselves represented in books. Can you give us your feelings on this? Yes, I think I think it's so important um, for kids everywhere to, no matter where you come from, where you were born, you should be able to have access to, to all of the books. Um, it's been great to see, you know, like a lot of people are deciding to to get the art of us and then donate it to their library or maybe a library in an area where, you know, kids may not, you know, be able to get this book. And so um, that's one of the one of the great things is just seeing how, you know, so many people are actively trying to get books into the hands of kids who might not be able to have access to it. And so um, we need more people like that every day, just trying to um, get these books in places where, especially in places where you know, um, the school might have banned the book or, you know, um, you know, a lot of a lot of barriers that shouldn't be there. Um, there's there's all different kinds of barriers for kids not to be getting um, access to the books that they should have. Um, so as long as we can break down all of those barriers and just like, you know, let kids read, I think that's very important for kids to be able to have access to all the books. We can't get the book at our library just because it keeps getting checked out since it came out. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's a good problem to have. <laughs> I hope they, they get some more books in there. You are considered a concept artist. Can you tell us about exactly what that is? I can. Um, so I like to create imagery um, and ideas that are typically on paper only as words. And so I wanna take those words and make images. Um, so a lot of times that's what I'll do. Um, if it's, it can be in film, there could be a script, somebody wrote a whole book or something and they wanna visualize, okay, what does that look like? Um, like I, I worked on Space Jam too, um, with um, Bugs Bunny and LeBron James. <laughs> and um, there was only words and they said, Nicholas, can you can you read this movie script and then draw what you think LeBron James would look like as a as a Looney Tune? Um, so that was one of my jobs, and so that's concept. Like it's um, it's not there visually, um, and you have to make it appear. You have to draw what you think it's gonna look like before it's there, and also you can draw conceptually what you think the world is gonna look like before you know it's materialized. Like you know what what would you know our country look like if everybody you know stopped using fossil fuels or something everybody everybody had electric cars and you know there was you know um not so much pollution in the world what would our world look like um what would our ocean look like if there was you know maybe no plastics and no trash um how clean would it look like conceptually what does that look like it may not be that way right now but like, how can you visualize what that would look like? It would probably look pure blue. Yes, I think so. And it'll be beautiful. Yeah. How does your own childhood impact your art in any way? Um, my childhood, I grew up in, in Texas. And um, I I think that there was, for me growing up um, in Texas, for one, in, in the schools, I... I remember learning a lot about um, a lot of um, different topics like the Alamo, Davy Crockett, um, George Washington. Um, I learned a lot of, of stories about all of these people. And they when, when we were learning about them as a, as a kid, they made everything seem like very heroic and awesome. Um, and they left out a whole lot of other stuff that I feel like could have been in the books. Um, and so... I always, they didn't, there weren't a ton of stories about people who look like me 
Um, and so like a lot of times now I'm creating stories of awesome people in the history books now that I didn't get to read about when I was growing up. Um, like Robert Smalls, who um, was a black man in America who was who was born enslaved and then he escaped slavery and he became a U.S. congressman, politician. Um, I, you know, stories like that, that I, I think that are amazing that I would love to hear more about. Um, and growing up, I didn't hear a lot about that. So um, um, just like um, wanting to wanting to now do stories like that and um, just really trying to trying to think about a lot of the kids who are growing up now who, who look like me, who um, maybe didn't get maybe still aren't getting um, all of the, you know, historical stories um, that might resemble them that, you know, that they might want to see. So I'll make a book about it or I'll do something like that. As you basically just said, there is more representation in books now than there ever has been before. Yes. You and your you and your books are a part of that trend. Is that something that that is important to you? It is so important. There when I when I started doing this 10 years ago, um I mean, I feel like there were very few books that had like, you know, black and brown faces on the books and um there's still, you know, not as many as I would like, but that's why I'm making more books and I'm making them as fast as I can. Um, but, you know, um, it's just wonderful to to be able to have books like 1619 Project Born on the Water and I Am Ruby Bridges and um, this book and that flag and and books that that have, um, you know, black and brown characters and um, get those percentages up to, to you know, to really give a, a more a more fair look on, you know, how the world is and how interconnected we all are. Um, especially there's like, you know, having stories like like that flag that show the history, um, for one, for that one of the Confederate flag, but his, how how we can show like, you know, th this is a story um, of a black girl and a white girl who um, are best friends who, you know, their friendship is, is, is um, tested by this, you know, historical fact. Um, and so I'm always, always wanting to, to keep getting more stories like that out there and, you know, for the things that I didn't get to see when I was a child um, that I think it's great that kids are seeing now. You spent a number of years working for Disney as an Imagineer. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Yeah, so I, like I said, I, I had an architecture degree um, from college, uh, master of architecture. And then I, I, right after, right after college, I started designing theme parks for 11 years. Um, so that was um, an amazing time and really got to travel and work on Shanghai Disneyland and, um, you know, a lot of the Marvel stuff and California Adventure um, and just, you know, making a lot of great designs. And then that's why I was saying, like, I was doing the architecture thing, but then I realized, OK, art is what I should be doing all the time. And so that's when I decided, all right, I'm going to I'm going to stop doing architecture and then change you know I changed my whole career and I started doing um I started doing picture books I started doing all kinds of illustrations um and lots of art and you know kind of kept going in that direction what artist or writer has had the most influence on you and your work oh good question um that's tough I mean I was I was very inspired early by Norman Rockwell and still very inspired by Norman Rockwell. Um, there's, you know, like the, he has the, um, a painting of Ruby Bridges um, that was always on my wall growing up. And so it's kind of ironic that I ended up making the Ruby Bridges picture book with Miss Ruby. Um, so definitely Norman Rockwell. Um, there's so many, there's so many African artists that I, I don't even, know their names but I was inspired by because like my parents would go to Africa and then bring back all this amazing um carved artwork um little sculptures giant sculptures and I never really got to know like who these African artists were but they I know like they 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 put so much detail into the wood carving and so when they would bring back the sculptures I would try to draw like my re my interpretation of the of the sculpture um draw on paper um what the wood carvings were um so a ton of african art um a lot of oil painters like i said like norman rockwell um digital artists um there's just 
a lot. I, I try to draw inspiration from, from everywhere, really. What advice do you have for young artists or writers? Young artists and writers, uh, my advice would be to, I always try to tell young folks um, to um, try to find who you feel like is the best at what you do, um, somebody who really inspires you and study them, study their craft. I mean, study that that craft, that thing that you do and they do maybe together. Um, and, you know, just like try to see how they created what they created and um, practice all the time. Um, make sure it's something that you're very passionate about, that you love. And I would also say connect to a cause. Like, what is that cause? What is that thing that you want to shout out to the world about? Connect to that thing. Um, and make art about that thing and tell everybody visually or in whatever way, um, whatever your creative outlet is, like use that creative outlet to tell people about how you want to fix that thing. So we'll start studying you and your work right now. <laughs> Thank you. I would love that. Appreciate it. Um, can you tell us about a project you're currently working on? Oh, there's so many things that I don't know if I can talk about. Um, I have a, a new picture book coming out next summer um, that is very heroic and super. And I can't tell you about which superhero, but it's really awesome. And um, yeah, and what else? And there's also, oh, there's also... Um, I have a tower that's it's a it's a big tower piece of architecture that's going up in downtown Disney in Anaheim, California. Um, that was announced, so I can talk about that. Um, and that's yeah, that should be coming out and going up sometime this year. Um, and I have a lot more. Um, I have a lot more art and a lot more books that I'm that I'm working on that that you you guys will see very soon. So. Excited. That sounds awesome. Thank you. How much would it mean to you if in 20 years or so people are coming up to you telling you that the artivist is what started their journey to activism and social justice? Wow, that would mean so much. Um, I hadn't thought about that until you just said that would be that would be amazing. Um because that's that's really what I would want this this book to do and to be about. Um, and I I want it to be that thing that um, can help inspire kids and and really kids of all ages, um, all people um, inspire people to use their creativity in that way. Um, so that would be that would make everything you know. I would say okay, yeah, that's that's why I did that. Yeah, I would love it. Finally, it's time for our Turbo 10. 10 okay. rapid fire questions. Are you right. ready? I am ready for Turbo 10. Okay. Number one, what is your favorite phrase to use? My favorite phrase to use? Um, love is a verb. Number two, what is one subject you'd love to learn more about? Um, Italian grammar because my wife is italian i'm trying to learn the language <laughs> number three what is your go-to snack food oh go-to snack food um um granola granola honey cashew granola cereal stuff number four what is one book that you loved growing up goosebumps rl stein Number five, if you could teleport somewhere right now, where do you go? Ooh. I would go to um, I would go to Ghana in Africa. Number six, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Um, it would be teleportation, so I could go to Ghana in Africa. <laughs> Number seven, what was your favorite cartoon as a kid? Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Number eight. What What is your favorite rainy day activity? Ooh, that would be, um, that would be playing with my son, um, like 
fake robots or whatever with boxes or building a, a castle with a couch with my son. He's three. Kind of looks like this. Number nine. If you could have any three dinner guests, who would they be? Three dinner guests. Oh my goodness. Um, they would be. They would be. Um, ooh, King Tut. Um, ooh, this is this is very hard. Oh my goodness, how much time do I have? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Robert Smalls, who I talked about earlier. Hmm, it's so hard. I don't know, Frederick Douglass. Number ten. What is the best piece of advice you were ever given? Basically, how far I'll go in life is is based on my mindset and and what I think. Like my limitations in my mind is how far I'll go. So I have to um kind of like break free of that and make sure that I'm not holding myself back. You were awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. And thank you so much for spending this time with us. I appreciate it. And thank you for spending some time with the artist and me. And thank you for what you do. You guys are amazing.